Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 77 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them so let's just get right to it this one's called Gravity or Manure Mark, something that makes me question the gravity feature of force upon water. I am assuming that gravity is what makes water flatten out wherever it is. If per se you, I'm reading this as is, weight, oh, say you weigh exactly 200 pounds at home on a set of quality scales. If you weighed yourself while on a small boat in the water, salt or fresh, would the scale register any difference? Taking the same scenario another step, if you weighed exactly 200 pounds at home, would your weight be the same at, the, at an altitude of 10,000 feet in an aircraft? To go a little further, if body weight is as much as 90% water, would your water weight change the farther above water you go, like up in an airplane, up in a mountain, or at seaside elevation? I'm not an experimenter, or I would have started this investigation myself. Thank you, Stan. Uh, yeah, Stan. Uh, I, again, I like that people will think outside of the box, literally. When I love that part about Flat Earth, that when you get into it, your mind is open to so many things. And you know, it's something I say at the end of just about every video, which is question everything. This one's called Flat. Hey, Mark. My name is Ryan. Been on board six months. I have the wonderful view of the arch at the current bridge we are building. The other day, my view took on a new symbop to me. Symbolism. It was built in 1962, coincidentally, I'm sure, and it's a monument to our firmament. Oh, he, he sent pictures. <laughs> this is going and I don't know what you're talking about here. Uh, first picture is about two megs. Oh, yeah, the it's the arch in St. Louis, of course. Yeah, very, very interesting. If you guys, In fact, I went to that when I was uh, 13 years old. Uh, my grandparents were trying to broaden me. And so we went to this whirlwind tour around the United States. And I actually went up in the St. Louis Arch. I'm sure it was a lot cheaper back then. Okay, moving on. This one's called Flat Lives Matter. Hey, Mark, I thought you might want to see this. In the last couple of days, I confronted a Facebook friend of mine, Adam Abraham, who was a good friend. He was making posts about the colonization and terraforming of Mars. I posted that we had never been to space and that we basically live in a flat plane. He then responded by putting the flatter subject on his video blog titled Flat Lives Matter. I thought you might find it interesting. And yeah, it's called The Inward Journey Home, Flat Lives Matter. So if you guys want to look that up, that's kind of cool. You know, I may, I'm may i going to put that in my to-do list. I'm going to take a look at that thing. Because as you know, I skim my emails. I don't read them. Uh, I just get too many. This one's called Simulation Theory and Purpose of Life. Mark, the two atta attachments are worth a peek. Please share. And one is a quantum dialogue on the meaning and purpose of existence. The other is simulations, backup theory that universe is a hologram. Okay, I will take a look at those. This one's called FE. Hi, Mark. I'm calling from Australia. Well, actually, you're emailing from Australia, but that's okay. Have come across you a few times on YouTube. Is there any chance I can take a little of your time to call you for a short chat? You left a number, 303-494-6631, on one of your talks. If I'm calling from Australia, what else would I need to add to make this number work? I do not know. I don't know what the company, country, co I don't know the process from calling from other countries to the United States. Or is it better number to use from here? I have no idea what state of the U.S. you are in, as that would perhaps allow a prefix to your number. No, no, the prefix is 303, uh, which is a Colorado prefix. However, I'm up in Seattle, but as you know, you can transfer numbers around the United States. So there's no special thing. If you're in the United States, the prefix is already built in. Anyway, hope to chat with you soon. Regards, Frederico. Cool. I'll write him back and say, hey, man, uh, call whenever. I may I may answer, I may not. It really depends. I, I, I also get a lot of calls. This is called Flat But Where. Mark, got a clue where? Just viewed your February 10th, 2015 YouTube. A flat Earth doesn't jive with the presented remaining balance of our universe. Looking for an educated brother. I don't know what to tell you. Don't. Yeah. Hopefully he's he's 
move down the path. All right, this one's called Plane Routes. Mark, good evening. I recently watched a video that you had on YouTube about flat earth and plane routes. Is that why plane flights are expensive? That's from Sarah. Uh, no, plane flights are just freaking expensive, period, because aircraft and aircraft fuel cost a lot of money. Aircrafts, uh, your, your your standard commercial jetliner, oh, geez, what is it in adjusted dollars now? Tens of millions of dollars, if not maybe $100 million? I, I, I'm not even sure. Well, like, it depends what kind of plane. If we're talking like a 747 or a 777, sorry, they don't make 747s anymore. A 777, I think it costs like $100 million. Um, and then you've got the massive upkeep on them because remember they swap out parts. It's different with airplanes. They swap out parts based, based off of time because you can't afford to have a plane uh, part start shedding off. And so it doesn't matter if the part looks perfectly good, you know, looks almost new, they're replacing that part because when you're in the air, you just can't afford to have things go wrong. So there's just a massive amount of upkeep that's all there is and and also the the not to go off too much on plane how much plane seats cost but also part of it is where you're going how many flights go in and out is there competition from other airlines oh boy unions t take your pick there's a lot of different things that factor into it but overall i, I still think that you know plane flights are cheaper than driving in in a lot of cases Especially if you're going uh, vast distance, you know, if you're going over half the country, way cheaper than, than trying to drive because you also have to include hotel costs and how much gas you're putting in your car and food you're buying on the way. Um, I've always found that, that planes are almost always more economical. May not be as convenient, but economically, yes. And, and all, last last thing, sorry, no, don't, I used to do business travel for a living, so I have an opinion on this. Uh, also, it, it depends on how far in advance you book your flight. If you book your flight with less than a week to go, they're going to charge you because they know that you're, you're absolutely desperate to get on that plane. You book it two months in advance, it'll be a lot cheaper. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm 18 years old and I live in Tenasket, Washington. Hmm. He's not that far from here. I have watched numerous videos of your most memorably Flat Earth Clues, along with Eric DeBay's videos that helped me to uh, come to a couple conclusions over the past year or two that one of those conclusions being that I believe this Flat Earth topic will continue to unfold and expose the lies, at least I hope, that have been engraved to us. I also came to conclusion that this is the topic everyone should be trying to get informed about because then it would lead to extraordinary yet important discoveries of our planet and mankind. You already know, keep it up. And that's from Alex. Yeah. Yep, absolutely right. And his, his, yeah, his English was a little broken. I, I didn't read his last name because it, I, it was tough to read. Okay, this one's called The Builder's Sun Technology. Hi, Mark. Joseph here. I've been looking at YouTube videos trying to get my head around the display system of the sun. A few YouTubers have showed that the builders are using some sort of lens projection system. My question, I guess, is how do you think technology work? Are the builders using multiple monumental magnifying lenses? If so, where's the light projected from? I'm guessing from, from the outside uh, or, or inside the um, part of the firmament itself. Could it be a very highly advanced quantum mecha mechanism using sound as a, a specific frequency over water, which can create light, otherwise known as Michael Tellinger theory? And then the lenses are used to magnify its form. Yeah, sure. Oh, and I almost forgot to say that I once saw a video of the sun touching the ground, which looks like it might have been Antarctica, almost hitting some workers, and it disappeared. <laughs> what? If it was a hologram, can we feel a hologram? Ooh, that's a, that's, that is an excellent question. It's something that's been touched on in sci-fi for years. Uh, if you watch Star Trek Next Generation, well, if you take the safety protocols off, yes, a hologram can kill you. Uh, or can the builders be using two suns? Also possible. Or how about a highly advanced classroom projector since the sky is supposedly an LCD screen? Well, a, a very high-end LCD. In fact, I don't even know if you call it LCD technically. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I love everything you're saying there. All that stuff is just wonderful because it means you are, you are trying to figure it out. That is great stuff. You 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 haven't settled on anything. You're you're kind of probing in multiple directions simultaneously. Love it. Love everything you're saying there. 
This one's called Nazi the Bell. Hey, Mark, have you ever heard of the bell made by the Nazis? Yes, I have. An anti-gravity machine they made in World War II might be a good reason to bring some of them over and hire them to work at NASA. Hey, cheers. And that's from uh, the Chad. And yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys didn't hear of the bell, uh, all that stuff, the, the, Indiana, the first Indiana Anna Jones movie where they were trying, the Nazis were trying to figure out how to win the war and they were going to do it at any cost you know it means if they find anything it doesn't matter what it is if it's it's if it's a magical artifact or a technology that no one else has really explored because it's kind of taboo they're going to do it again all's fair in love and war so they made something called the bell which wasn't just an anti-gravity machine it was supposedly was a time travel machine and it was literally their last ditch effort so as everybody's closing in around them the americans and the, and the soviet union are closing in from both sides they were still working on on the bell which was supposedly reverse engineered from spaceship technology and that if you can imagine but again even the bell isn't a surefire way to win the war because so let's say you go back in time is it the, does it change the current timeline like we see in a lot of movies or does it create a completely different timeline where nobody knows about except for the people that went back in the bell fascinating fascinating stuff yeah the nazis were all over the place they were it, there's a reason why it took the entire world to, to take them down i mean literally everybody it was everybody versus the nazis uh, with the exception of the japanese and oof, it was it was tough going tough sledding this one's called no subject hi mark thank you so much for all the work you do i came across this video the revelation of the pyramids it's a documentary. To me, it's amazing how confused these scientists can get with ancient technology. I am not good with math, so my question is, would the alignments of these pyramids in this video be able to apply on a flat Earth? Sure. Yeah, why not? I mean, star trails are still up there. Uh, would you be able to make a video about it, especially with the comments provided by the scientists? Probably not. Uh, I was thinking about sending it to Rob Skiba too, or maybe you guys can work on it together. Love the work. May Father in Heaven keep blessing you. Keep bringing the truth. Roberta Dial, 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 D-I-E-H-L. Anyway, thank you, Roberta, for that. And yeah, I, that was one of the reasons I went over and visited the pyramids, because I it was like on my bucket list. I got to go over there and, and, and check it out for myself and stand below it and say, okay, what's my opinion on that and the Sphinx? And uh, I can tell you, because Cairo, you don't see it in the pictures, you know, the city of Cairo is literally backed up right next to the pyramids, and they and they never show that. The other side is all desert, but the, the the one side, it's all city, and you can tell by 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 looking at the city and, and spending time with the people that they had nothing to do. They are not the descendants of whoever built this, this these pyramids. We're talking about massive, massive blocks. Uh, now, we, you're, what you're seeing when you're looking at the pyramids is not even the, the full thing. Uh, you're just looking at the superstructure. The outside casing, which was white marble, which would have been visible forever, when, especially when the, the sun was reflecting on it, uh, that was rem that would have been remarkable. And they took it because marble was you know highly sought after at, during well, when, it, when it was cannibalized. But yeah, there's the pyramids are, are still a mystery to this day. And it was so mind boggling to even the pharaohs that they, had, they just laid claim to it. So yeah, we built, we built it in 30 years and yet there's not a single hieroglyph showing anything regarding how it was made. Not one. And so that's, again, it's one of the mysteries that scientists is like, how were they built? Who built it? Who fi Or Stephen Wright joke, who financed the pyramids? Because it would have cost a huge amount of, of resources. And why would you why would you spend that sort? We're talking, it would have cost in adjusted dollars, billions. And who would have done it? And why? Unless it, unless it was easy. And then it changes everything. Anyway, this one's called, Is It Flat Mark? Mark, you've interviewed some very educated people. Why not try an educated man? Please interview me. <laughs> I have something very interesting to share with you. And that's from D.L. Ayers. A-Y-E-R-S. Present truth messages at gmail.com. Well, that's, that's great that you tell me you're an educated man, but you might want to list what you done. So... You can't just say you're an educated man. It, it doesn't doesn't cut it. You got to list your credentials. In fact, I had a, a German physicist contact me. Oh boy, at least a couple of years ago now, and he said he wanted to debate me, and he listed all his his qualifications, which was great, but he wouldn't give me his name. 
And and I go, look, I, I'm not going to debate you unless you put your name out there. Because why is the name important? Why is that? I'm going because you could be and you could be anyone. I, mean, I could I could send somebody an anonymous email and list all these fun things that I was uh, I had a PhD in quantum physics and uh, you know was on several panels and 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 chaired a whole bunch of different committees and you know unless I give my name you can't confirm it. So unless I have something to actually verify. You're just uh, not that much better than a troll, to be honest. This one's called The Sun and Firmament. Hi, Mark. I need to get one thing straight if possible. I'm a F-E. They state they believe the sun and the moon to be around 3,000 miles away, yet the rocket that spins and looks like it hits the firmament isn't near that far out. That's true. Nor the nukes sent up by Russia and the USA back in the late 50s and early 60s. So how could the sun and moon be inside the firmament unless it's over 3,000 miles tall? That's a big dome. Thanks, Marty. Yeah, I'm open to it. I, it, it really depends on what the sun and the moon are made out of. Are they physical objects? Are they light bulbs? Can you hit them with atomic weapons? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but even even 3,000 miles isn't that high in the grand scheme of things. Even if it was as high as 3,000, it would still look like a shallow sports stadium. Because remember, a sports stadium is much, much wider than it is tall. And that's what we're really talking about here. A snow globe is almost as tall as it is wide. And I can't imagine this thing being 20,000 miles tall. But anyway, this one's called F.E. Stuff. Mark, I always wondered about the moon landings, the Russians and all that. Always wondered why they stopped going. Yeah, The shuttle program basically halted operation. I couldn't get it. After seeing some of your stuff, I could see maybe why it was done. I think the stuff like Nixon. He has the guy during Apollo. Jaron might sarcastically say, oh yeah, Nixon, I heard he might have uh, been a bit dishonest. And these astronauts, it seems like the early ones, Gemini and Apollo, don't forget Mercury, by the way, were guys who at least looked like astronauts. Very, very true. The ones they got now look like somebody I'd see in the neighborhood bar sitting, having a beer, watching the game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're just average Air Force guys. Uh, the women look like the waitresses that might work there. When I think about the dome, I first thought we were now limited. No limitless space and all that. There's now a limit to what we can learn. But then when we finally realize we are on a flat plane, we got to start all over. Science kicks into high gear. Rediscover the Earth. There's ton more, tons more to learn. I, too, feel sorry for Neil Armstrong. Seemed like a nice guy. He had class. Must have been nothing but pure conflict inside. In that news conference, he really didn't seem nervous. More like real pissed. Buzz too. Poor bastard. The flat disc with an upturned edge seems about right. And that's from JP in Ontario, Canada. Yep. Agree with pretty much everything there. This one's called Debate. Mark, I so want to debate you because you are the biggest effing idiot on the planet besides all the other flatheads. Let's do it and I can be civil <laughs> with an opening line like that. <laughs> Literally, you're swearing in the in the opening line. Uh, yeah, yeah. You might be surprised. Oh, and I'd, I'd be shocked if you actually kept it civil. But you will be an idiot for all to see. Yeah, and then you follow it with. And that's from uh, a guy named Richard Lynch. And his quote is, your God isn't as stupid as the flat earth. And he spells God with G-A-W-D. I don't know if he's trying to be funny there, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, and I read that deliberately. I, I I do not get that many troll emails. Ninety, as you guys know, I've I've read a lot of emails on this stuff, and I do not get a lot of troll emails. But I thought that one was kind of great because because of what he said there. Um, yeah, let's debate, and I'll absolutely you know behave myself. It's like no, no, you won't. Trolls never do. This one's called "Looks Local to Me," Mark. It could be 93 million miles away. Yeah, I don't think so. 93 million miles. I would love someone who believes this BS to count to 93 million. I bet they give up. And that's from Lenny. Yep, very true. This one's called Flat Earth Trifold Brochure. Designed for groups. Hi, Mark. YouTuber friend of Yahweh here. Check out this trifold I did for my buddy, Real Realm Walker, who started a Flat Earth activism group in Chicago, Flat Earth Chicago, ordering 2,000 of them. I would love to share with other groups that are in need of a flyer 
a trifold like this, I can customize the about section for each group. What is the best way to put out the word? Can you help? Yeah, I'm going to give you out your email address right now. Also, if you have any proofs you think would be better, let me know your thoughts, any edits to make it better. Also, my buddy wanted to be on there. My thought is to not have him on there. What do you think? Thank you, Andrew. Okay, first off, if anyone wants flat earth trifolds, and I'm sure they're not absolutely free, but he'll probably cut you a deal because it's flat earth. Uh, you can email, and it's his email address. It's Andrew Lanks, L-A-N-K-E-S, and it's the same email address. So A-N-D-R-E-W-L-A-N-K-E-S at yahoo.com if you want a flat earth trifold. Uh, and especially for your group, if you're doing activism and even if it's overseas, I'm sure. And as far as having Eric Dubay in there, I, I've got mixed feelings because as you know, I mean, yeah, he, he's, he has, you know, his 200 proofs are out there and he's got a lot of content out there. However, I absolutely, and you've heard me say this many times, disagree with his attacking of demographic groups. I don't care what group you're attacking. It does not jibe with flat earth. So if you've got some beef, you know, with black people or homosexuals or women or uh, Italians or, you know, my favorites, uh, the Eskimos and the Sherpas of the Himalayas, which I loathe with an unending fury then you got you got a problem you know i don't make videos against eskimos and so that's my that's my point if you if you hate demographic groups do not bring it into the flat earth arena don't do it and eric does and so it, it sends the wrong message and so i i can't and won't ever endorse him and just to be clear anyone out there and listening and every producer that i've talked to that figures that out that figures out that that eric is in this case anti-semitic they just it's like yeah we're that's it the conversation uh, his part of that in the conversation is over is like you can almost hear the his name being crossed out on a piece of paper on the other side because it's just sorry it's a it's a very hypersensitive pc world now even more than it ever was i mean it never was in fashion but now it really is in fashion you even breathe in in a demographic group's direction you're gonna catch hell and uh so yeah there, that's my opinion. That's where we're going from there. Uh, this one's called a new flat earth map. Mark, the whole question of a spherical or flat earth has caught my intellectual curiosity. Do you think it is possible to use the Photoshop information from Rob Simmons of Blue Marble Fame Globe and derive a flat earth version? You would be using the same data set materials so no one could say you modified or enhanced anything, including Photoshop like Simmons did. Has this already been done? Just a feeling flat thought passed through, but not stopping my cranium. Love your work. Keep it all spinning upwards, Matt. I don't know what you would gain from using the Robert Simmons version of the Blue Marble and then trying to flatten it out and turn it into a, a flat earth map. Uh, that that model set. I just don't know. I, I don't know if it would look any different. Because remember, it, it, once you start flattening out, it's kind of up to you to figure out how things get stretched. And at that point, it doesn't become objective anymore. So it could look any way you wanted. I'm, I am I like, again, like like the idea, like the uh, the fact that you're thinking. I, I just don't know if you would get out of it. What, you know, th Turn it into a thought experiment. And if you had to take his blue marble thing and turn it into a flat earth map, what exactly would you do to it to, you know, men, you'd be moving the continents around on your own. What exactly... Because eventually it would start looking like whatever you wanted it to look like. And if you gave it to another person, same same sort of thing. They'd just be stretching the canvas in a certain way. So, hmm, interesting. This one's called Building Support for FE. Hello, Mark Sargent. My name is John Evans. I have left two voicemails on your posted phone number. Not sure if that is a good number, so try the email thing. Hate typing on phone. I'm a paid member on your app. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Yeah, anyone that, that's using my app probably shouldn't be at this point because I have nothing to do with that anymore. Uh, they and, and the reason is, uh, you know what, let me read this, the rest of this. I was hoping before a little help building awareness of the Flat Earth. I saw the video you did from Michelle Nicole and went to a meetup a week ago last Friday. Good turnout. Let me know if you want to help. If you want to help out or if you're too busy, let me know too. I will understand that too. Thank you, John Evans. Prefer the phone number, uh, though I'll check my emails. Uh, yeah, and I, sorry, I just, I just read this now and this was back in May. The 
the app that was given to me for free, you know, basically, I get a lot of stuff for free. People send me stuff all the time, t-shirts and flyers, and I get all sorts of stuff, and including apps. And the, the one that was done by um, Joe Real and, and Dennis Luca, they built me an app for free. And then they said, oh, hey, let's can we if we do Mark Sargent dot com, uh, we'll, we'll split the money for you. And I said, do I have to do anything because I'm busy? And, and they said, no, we'll, we'll take care of everything. And I go, OK. And then they didn't give me a dime. So I'm sorry. They sent me I think they sent me one check in the beginning. And that was it. You know, it, that, that it's the same way with a lot of things. When money gets tight on the other side, the commissions stop coming. You know, even though it's like, oh, wait, were we talking about your personal finances? What's that got to do with how many people subscribe? So you subscribe to MarkSargent.com or my app. Please turn it off. Shut that crap down because uh, I have nothing to do with that. Uh, yeah, please just don't don't do it. Hopefully there's not that many people out there that still do it. Moving on. This one's called Hypothesis Globe Earth Atmosphere Would Be in a Constant Turmoil Because of Friction from Geography Trees, Buildings, Etc. While Spinning at 1,080 Miles an Hour. That's literally the title. And the title's longer than the email. The email says, Hello, Mark. I do not have the software or knowledge to program, program this hypothesis. Do you know of any flat earthers that would be willing to work on this idea? It's from Dave. Yeah, if anyone wants to work on that, uh, you can contact Dave at Gruffy, G-R-U, no, Griffy, wow, I need glasses, no, I think it's Gruffy, G-R-U-F-F-Y-Y-D-D at gmail.com, I think, let me check, double check that one more time, and that's, yeah, G-R-U-F-F-Y-Y-D-D at gmail.com, yeah, if anyone wants to do that for him. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Mark, my name is Jay. Do you still use this email account? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do this while I got you guys in the moment right here. Yes. Yes. I do! Exclamation point. Mark. And he sent that oh, at least six weeks ago. So <laughs> he's now getting it. And he probably thinks, no, I don't. But you got to remember, email is different from when it used to be. If you put in a, an email address that's not valid anymore. Now, if it's still valid, yeah, the email just go off into somebody's mailbox and they'll never ever see it. But if it's invalid, it bounces back to you instantly. It's not like the old days where it actually took like 10 minutes for it to bounce back. Uh, this one's called NASA's Mars Helicopter. Hello, Mark. So look at what $18 billion a year gives us. A NASA Mars Helicopter Drone. Seriously, this is more stupid than Tesla's Roadster in space. Add this animation to your intro. Uh, stay flat, brother. And this from Nick. You know what? I'm going to click on this just to see what the hell. Mars Helicopter to fly on NASA's next Red Planet Rover mission. And it's a stupid... Oh, wow. It's a stu... Yeah, it's a little helicopter drony thing why would you just use a normal drone why do you have to do this special double bladed thing how much did how much did that cost it's got a nasa sticker on the side of it whatever that was released may 11th 2018 oh what a piece of ah awful okay uh that's from dan the waterman this is sorry i'm trying to just get rid of some emails real quick personal emails this one's called sea tide and gravity hello mark i had an idea to prove gravity does not exist the theory goes that the moon is pulling on the oceans and it creates the tides if this is true the moon is pulling on everything so we should be able to measure the weight difference of objects on high tide from low tide hmm that's an interesting thought because it is pulling the water is it pulling? Yeah, it is pulling the water, but yeah, let me know what you think. Regards, Renee. Yeah, that's not that's not a bad idea. Of course, you have to kind of figure out, well, again, what science tells you how exactly the, the, the water is being pulled. And is it being pulled kind of sideways? Is it kind of tugging from above? Yeah, it's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Again, love that stuff. This one's called youtube vid flat earth published december 1st 2015 hi mark just watched your vid and well you got me thinking bro big time i regard myself as an open-minded type guy i never discount anything i never flame people wow somebody actually still says flame for their opinions 
Everyone's Matters to Me. My name is Greg. I live in Adelaide, Australia, a southern city. Your southern hemisphere plane travel part of the video really got me thinking. By the way, uh, a thought, your presentation and narration was just plain good, non-biased, and very well thought. P.S. I'll go looking, searching for more subject matter on the Flat Earth subject. Regards, Greg. This one's called Flat Earth Research and Social Anthropology. Hello, Mark. I am a social and cultural anthropologist currently researching the Flat Earth Movement and Community. I am presenting a paper in an international conference this August in Stockholm, Sweden. It is the largest anthropology conference in Europe this year with 165 panels that feature five to 10 speakers each. Wow, that's a lot of panels. Uh, my paper is already was already accepted to the conference and it focuses on the similarities and differences among FE researchers and how they relate to so-called conspiracy theories. That is, what are the points that most agree with and the particular differences that make them stand apart as individuals. I am to show the diversity of FE research, its sincerity, and prove that the questioning of mainstream science should be accepted and understood instead of automatically re-updated with, I'm sorry, re reudiated, rep, rep, uh, whatever, with knee-jerk reactions. I know, I've never used that word before. Social and cultural anthropologists are usually quite open-minded towards critiques of mainstream science theories and should always take seriously the positions that people they work with articulate. This means that I aim to portray anyone who talks with me in ways that are faithful to their own words, personal identity, and the information they present. It is my duty as a professional ethno ethnographer and anthropologist to take seriously everyone that shares their information with me and not to represent them on or their ideas. It would be great to have a chance to talk with you online about your research and the information you present. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Blah, blah, blah. All the best, Rodrigo. And you know what? I When is he doing this? This is August. Wow, I've got, I should probably contact him because it's been a while. I am sorry about that. Okay. I will contact him after this is over. This uh, is called Food for Thought. Mark, I got thinking today about gravity as density. Could you please get a metallurgist to talk about various metals being melted and what floats to the surface versus what drops to the bottom? I think that would make for an interesting view on the subject. I've seen and heard plenty of air glasses and air and glasses and water and air, but I think the perspective of varying degrees of metal densities would kick gravity in the balls as it were. Any tests done with multiple metals at the same time, I know lower density metals float to the surface and are screened off to remove their contamination, but what of higher density ones? Just a thought, I really hope to see a video on this subject in the future. Thanks again for the work you do, Justin Jordan. Yeah, cool. It's not a bad idea getting a metallurgist. This one's called, oh, look at that, Survival Guide. Aloha, Mark, Survival Guide and Song. Thank you, Mark. Quick question, Survival Guide, yes. We will print it. Will you please also forward me the Flat Boy song when you receive it from the Deep Freeze, the 805 area code man who called in from Paso Robles. Robles? Yeah, it's R O B L E S. Robles. I lived in San Luis Obispo for 12 years before moving here to Hawaii, and I have a family in Paso still, and would love to hear this song. And that's from Carissa. I'm pretty sure I sent it to her pretty sure this one's called water and it's loading um, we say water is always flat but recently science talks about all the amazing things that water can do I remember dropping water drops on a coin as a kid in class water makes a bubble well, that's water tension though if water if it, it describes water surface tension yes surface tension uh, you can keep adding drops of water till it can't hold tension anymore, and then, then what? Till it can't hold tension anymore, and then counting how many drops it takes to break that tension. We never learned any of the math of surface of a penny, uh, edge of a penny. No kids just counted drops. Don't push them to think. Well, we talk about the crystalline dome. Well, here's a picture of drops on a quarter. It's rounded on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, take a water. Yeah, that's very very interesting. You take put a, put water on a penny, and as long as it uh, the drops don't leave the penny, it kind of looks like a dome structure. That's kind of cool. 
I like that. That's from John. That's neat. This one's called Making a 200 Proofs the Earth is Flat Video Idea. Hi, Mark. Alex Jones had a Chris Revere Best Video Competition. What is your opinion on doing a similar thing? Asking FEs and anyone to take and send very short video clips or photos of what they have seen on the horizon that shouldn't be there on a globe or of test proof experiments they have photos of. For example, like the first two photos of the video below duration 18 seconds, flying a fl finding a flat earther willing to do it and collect them at an email address. All qualifiers get their channel mentioned in the credits or links to their full video proof in the description, a few rules and instructions on how to do it. Not necessary, but maybe some small prize for the winner, best or all. Think of a name for it. Uh, like photograph flat earth collaboration when enough are collected put them all in one video ask all who entered to share everyone involved benefits and it makes quick fe research many thanks from duncan smith in the uk uh let's see asking flat earthers anyone to take very short video clips of what they have seen in the horizon shouldn't be there in a globe i mean honestly duncan there's so much there's so much material out there there's so many uh there's so much content that you could make a compilation just out of the clips that are on YouTube right now. And some people have, uh, but I mean, what you're talking about is you're talking about a lot of editing. Really? I, I don't know if I'd be doing it anytime soon. Um, this one's called flat earth license plates. And it says here is mine. And he sent it from, where's his from? Yep. That was the California one that I put in. Uh, in fact, I just released the flat earth compilation for this month. It includes everything all the way till this date. He's from California and he actually did a little slang. He called it tis flat T I Z F L A T. And if you guys, anyone want out, out there wants to do something clever with their license from whatever their state is or province, remember you get six or seven or eight letters, depending on where you are. And you can do all sorts of fun. Most of the time it's, it's a version of it's flat or flat earth or no globe, no sphere. There's all sorts of fun stuff. So get creative with it. This one's called flat earth material. Mark, I like your info. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Can you forward me all your links so I can hear it in its totality? Did I respond back to him? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And, uh, and usually what I'll do is I'll send my channel and then I'll send them a link to two playlists I have in there. One is the testimony shows by subject matter experts. And the other one's called the Flat Earth Shortlist for New People, which is a collection of all sorts of videos in the Flat Earth world, about 20, 25 of them that I try to keep, not necessarily current, but relevant. And it's from all sorts of different people. And they range from five minutes to two hours. And they're really, really good. This one is called Thank You. Hi, Mark. Just want to say thank you very much for all your time and effort yesterday. You were very popular among the fraternity. The Oh, yeah, that was when I called into the New Zealand conference. The Flat Earth New Zealand conference was a success. Thank you from the heart. God bless you, Mark. Warm regards. And that's from Richard. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Dave Murphy and I both called in. They put us on a big screen in a bar. <laughs> of course, it's New Zealand, right? And we, we fielded questions. I did a and a well, while I was there and it was great. Cause I could, I could see the people, they had the camera facing out as well. So I could see the people in the bar when they had questions and going to get pints and uh, a lot of fun. I did not see Frodo. This one's called flat stuff. Mark, once again, Eric gets me thinking if I were to be brought up from birth believing the earth is flat and then when i'm 20 someone tried to convince me it was round but do your own research i think i would have trouble even starting yeah that's why it was such a big secret for so long even if i had a as strong a desire to proceed as i have with the flat earth phenomenon it would still be difficult where's my material i would begin to think that guy who told me the earth is round what an idiot hey wait that's what people tell me right now <laughs> that's from john it's nice this one's called Watch the Super Bowl 11 Halftime Show from January 1977 featuring the 1977 Mouseketeers on YouTube. Okay, uh, you guys can look it up. Hey, Mark, my sister tipped me off to this. Go around nine minutes. The Flat Earth map is featured in the 1977 Super Bowl. Wow, weird that they would be featuring a spinning ball Earth. Thanks. That's from Nordy K. Knutson. Yep, you know what? I did not watch that, so that goes into my to-do pile. And then sent it a second time. Here's a picture of the Flat Earth at the Super Bowl game. Maybe you can use it in your slideshow. All right, I'm going to click on it right now. 
Yeah, yeah, it kind of is a flat earth. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, we've come a long way in the Super Bowl halftime shows. That was long time ago. Mouseketeers in 1977. How weird is that? Okay, this one's called Recent Plane Ride Overseas. Mark, I recently traveled to the Philippines for work. On my way there, a flight was 14 hours, 55 minutes from LA to Manila. On the way back, it was scheduled for 13 hours, 45 minutes, same route. We got to LA in just 12 hours. I'm trying to wrap my head around it because according to the flight map, we took the same route. An arch up past Japan, Alaska, and then down to California. Any thoughts on this? Uh, no, normally the strange world you discuss Southern Hemisphere, so I'm not sure if this relates to Flat Earth in any way. No, it doesn't. It's Part of it's jet stream. You got to remember, the jet stream is real. And that is when you get up to a certain altitude, there are there's massive currents of wind called the jet stream, which can travel upwards of 100 to 150 miles an hour. And it really, you know, you it, known as a tailwind or a headwind. And it's from Rachel in Idaho, by the way. And you can... It's it's amazing. It really really helps you when you're when you're flying with it. It's like going down a river. And literally, you know, that's why they call it the jet stream. And when you're flying against it, uh, it can you know you're 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 burning a lot more fuel. So and it never really changes. It always goes one direction. It's fascinating and it looks perfect on a flat Earth map. Rob Skiba did a great job lining it up to a flat Earth map. This one's called over the line. It's a threshold question. Hey, Mark, I would like you to address your thoughts on what your plan is after FE reaches a threshold that will change the consensus of the Earth as a globe. Well, then I won't have to really do this, hopefully, as much. I, I will be, uh, my, my job as the freshman recruiter will be over because there'll be no more freshmen. So what do you think will happen? I think the world will change. Uh, should we build a bunker? Uh, I, I, you know what? Couldn't hurt. Should we invest in transportation vehicles? I don't know what that would do. What do you think the governments will do? That's the big question. Try to contain the masses. Resign. What do you think regular people will do? Start killing each other. Like He's got a lot of questions. Start killing each other like madmen. Who wouldn't be mad when they discover they were lied to their entire lives? Can you see the outcome where peace will be established across the entire world? I'm really interested in your thoughts on this. Best regards, Alex. And yeah, Alex, I have talked about this a lot over the last couple of years, which is what happens. What, again, why it's been kept a secret for so long. and But now, you know, what does the population do? Was the population ready in 1960 or are they ready now? Because remember, now we've got 7 billion people. We've got 6 billion smart devices, which means you can spin the right story simultaneously to everybody, bypassing all the grapevines. You can basically create the same grapevine story everywhere. And there shouldn't be too much... Uh, variations of that, you know, of course, there'll be a, a few people here and there that'll, that'll spin it in another direction. But if you wanted to release it to the public, now would be the perfect time because you've got everybody on the same page. And remember, everybody is younger than, oh, the age of 30. They're locked into their computers and, and their phones more, more often than not, uh, not just the millennials, but everybody that's coming up behind the millennials, which would be, uh, I think it's iGen. Is that what kind of the fun name they're calling them? And they're, they're tied to it. So if they're all of a sudden told, they believe basically kind of like the, the u.gov consensus where they, they talk to 8,000, 8, 9,000 Americans and the 18 to 24 year olds were like, oh yeah, you know, we believe, you know, they, they were more likely to not believe in the globe anymore. And that's because the, there's so much content out there. They've just been absorbing it and they're more pliable. And so would there be rioting in the streets? I don't know. Who are you going to riot against? I, I thought of that too. You know, is it a pitchfork and, and torch type scenario where people are running through like they're, you know, they want to burn things down? What exactly are you going to burn down? The universities? NASA? I mean, yeah, NASA will, will come under fire, sure. But that's minor. You, you, you're not, I mean, there's a lot of universities in, in every state and every country. And it's not all their fault. Just because you have an astrophysics and astronomy department doesn't mean... You should burn down the libraries. Not that anyone goes to the libraries anymore. So I don't know. It's, it's the big open-ended question. And we'll have to see. It's uncharted territory, but isn't it worth taking the risk? Isn't it worth, worth moving forward? Because it's not, it's not getting any better out there. It's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And now we're just kind of grinding metal. We're just spinning gears. 
and because we haven't done any there's there's no novelty left in, in the world we've we've tapped out we've jumped the shark the civilization has run its course like all the other civilizations before this one and now i think it's it's the world's way of saying okay school's over <laughs> time to time to transition you know what kind of ending do you want you know do you want the uh, happy popcorn ending or the award-winning tragedy one of the two anyway moving on this one's called thank you mark i suppose i just wanted to make sure this was still your email address uh, another one of those I just finished watching the full documentary, God's Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation, Parts 1 through 12. Is that a new one I haven't heard of? Because it's, I'm sure it's the, the clues, but God, God's Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation, Parts 1 through 12. Now I'm going to have to look this up. Thank you so much. My name is Keith Barber. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I just wanted to, uh, going to check Facebook for your name now. However, it's something different. Please find me. I have tears in my eyes right now. I appreciate the work. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay, I will write him back and point him at my main page. This one's called Survival Guide. Well, finally. Hey, Mark, keep up the good work. Is something If something is small, is it far away? <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. It's a great one. There was a British uh, comedy thing that did that. Very small or very far away. And that's from Stetson. Thank you, Stetson. This one's called Moon Thoughts. Mark, I have listened to almost every Strange World episode on YouTube. I hope to call in on Tuesday, but work keeps me swamped. I have a question for the Globe Defenders, and maybe there is a simple answer. If the shadow cast on the moon is from the Earth, then how come we see different angles in the shadow? Shadow cast on the moon is from the Earth, and how come we see different angles in the shadow? Yeah, I just stepped outside and looked at the moon, and the shadow's edge is almost a straight line. If the shape of the Earth doesn't change, then why does the shadow change from the iconic banana shape to the nearly 50-50 shadow? Maybe I'm not phrasing that correctly, but I hope you get the point. Also, why do objects weigh the same in L.A. as they do in Spokane, a thousand miles north? Well, heck, if you're going to do L.A. and Spokane, you should do the North Pole and the Equator. That, that That's a more interesting one. I was in both places in the last four weeks. You lose a huge amount of what I call ejection force, otherwise known as then centrifugal force. But I like the ejection force. That's good. Using a merry-go-round as an example, most people don't understand the term centrifugal force when you remove hundreds of miles an hour of spin, but gravity supposedly has an even pull over the globe, though not stated that I have found it is even enough to turn this rock into a ball. It must be damn consistent. Thanks, Aaron. And yeah, let's let's go into that just a, just for a minute, and that is the centrifugal force, merry-go-round argument. If you're uh, on the edge of a merry-go-round, it's trying to throw you off. That's the force of the merry-go-round. Uh, however, if you're standing in the middle of the merry-go-round, you're just turning in a circle, maybe getting dizzy, maybe not. It's a pretty slow thing, but if it's going fast, you might get dizzy. I'd probably get dizzy. So apply that to a globe. The outside edge would be the equator of the merry-go-round globe. And the top, or, or either side, you could do this North Pole or the South Pole, wouldn't be spinning at all. You know, wouldn't be spinning with any force. So it's a thousand miles an hour at the equator, which is pretty fast. Or it's faster than the speed of sound. Or zero miles an hour at the North Pole, which means that at the equator, the force of that is trying to throw you off, which means it's trying to counteract gravity, which means if you weigh 100 pounds at the North Pole, well, okay, you, we'll say 100 pounds. Uh, if you weigh 100 pounds, because it's a pretty small person, 100 pounds in the North Pole, then you should weigh slightly less, slightly less at the equator, shouldn't you? Any, so you can take any weight. I wouldn't recommend doing this with, with the person because person people change weight. Uh, but use a, like a 10 pound weight or 100 pound weight at the North Pole at the equator. Shouldn't it be slightly less? I'm not saying it should be 10 pounds less, but it should be measurable. We've got some really, really precise scales, and you should take your scale with you if you can. Do it from the North Pole to the, the equator. It should weigh slightly less, and yet we never even heard about that. And if that's the case, wouldn't that mean that when you you would have to account for that? Like, let's say a ship full of cargo. You know, you're, you're sending tons and tons and tons of cargo from north climates to south climates. Shouldn't you have to factor, factor that in? We've never, ever heard of that, ever, because it doesn't exist doesn't happen moving on we can do a few more let's do this one's called hey now i don't think i've ever gotten an email called hey now mark you know 
barely learned what teal is found out. I am on many subject. It It's silly, but like you, many more truths than the crowd. But love the question, who made the dome? Really, had to say hi, hello, and really like to know last book you read. <laughs> <laughs> keep planting seeds people are listening much respect jared the last book i read actual physical paper bound book uh was probably a graphic novel because i used to own a comic book store i i don't honestly know the last physical book i've read because i've read so much most of it's, like with anybody i read it's almost always text it's 90 something percent text i don't the book industry just must be getting crushed over the years because why especially once the tablets and kindles and uh, you know uh, just whatever books you can buy off of the digital copies off of amazon heck people are bringing uh, digital bibles to church i i i have i have a little opinion on that which is why i you should stick to old school because it isn't the whole tactile you're holding the book the the good book in your hand uh, you know how does that work later it's like you're holding the good tablet in your hand <laughs> You're holding the good, good version of iPhone in your hand. Uh, tradition. I'm, I'm a fan. Moving on. This one's called. We're gonna do like two or three more, and call it good. This one's called alternate article. Hi Mark. What an ignorant, convoluted article this is. If the authors had really researched Flat Earth, they would have found out that the Flat Earth Society is not the voice of the movement, and that's all Flat Earthers are not fundamentalist evangelical Christians. However, Flat Earth is getting more and more exposure, and that's a good thing. And that's from Mary, and the article is called, it's from Alternet. Alternet.org, Flat Earthers versus Climate Change Skeptics, Why Conspiracy Theorists Keep Contradicting Each Other. Hmm. All right. I don't know if I'll read it, but still, it's an interesting article. Maybe you guys should read it. This one's called Disregard Other Email. Mark, in regards to the live ISS footage, now that I've taken time to watch more, it's so thrilling. Not all of it is, all it is, is a 45 minute loop of the same thing over and over. That's from Laura Nelson. Yep, yeah, yeah, I get those every once in a while, which is also good why I don't read all the emails immediately. This one's called Meetup. Mark, when will there be one in Palm, Broward, or Dade counties? And that was from back in May. Yeah, we we did one down there just recently. I think I wrote him back. We we did the one in we did one in Arcadia, and then when I was down there with um, National Geographic and Patricia Steer was there and Rob Skiba was there and Nathan Thompson was there. It was a lot of fun. If you're if you're ever curious about what meetups are are happening at a given time, just type in Flat Earth Meetup into YouTube and sort by uh, the last month. I mean, if you want, you can sort by the last year. There's a lot of meetups, and I have to do a promos for a whole bunch of them. Uh, but check that out if you get a chance. This one's called Flat Club. Let's see which one we can end on. Hi, Mark. Just a few things. I know it's not a good idea to talk about Flat Club. Three of us were down at camp over the weekend installing new flooring. We were done for the day and went down to the waterfront on a clear night, and so I asked, Hey, since the Earth rotates west to east, it should take me way less time to fly from Toronto to Vancouver than it does a return flight. The answer I got was, That could be, John, but we will leave that up to the people who spend all their time thinking about that stuff. We are flooring guys. Wow. That answer says a lot to me. Everyone is busy doing their own thing. I have a day job, Monday through Friday, but I find this interesting, and I think somehow people could just give it a chance they would make time. So the flat club rule still stands, but maybe we could at least once in a while throw out little teaser questions. And this is from John. You know what? I'm going to end on that one because uh, it, it kind of segues into the clue that I'm going to be releasing on Wednesday morning, which is called The Code of Credibility which is that um, the, what they're talking about here in this email is something that I have noticed over the years, which is we science has convinced the general public to leave science up to them, meaning people shouldn't think for themselves. They should not do their own research. They should not ask questions. They should leave it up to the men in the white coats. The men in the white coats know better than you. They're smarter than you, and they should make the decisions for you. Yeah. Yeah, that just even saying that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And 
that that's why I made the clue, which is it's amazing that and, and people buy it. And, and what has happened is that science has taken it too far. Like some religions, and I'm not going to pick, they have, they have taken science and changed it into their own religion. And, what they, and they've taken liberties. And they basically said, well, if the people are going to buy anything that we say, if they're going to believe anything that we put our stamp of approval on, then we're just going to stamp approval anything according to the money. And I don't want to go off too far off into the weeds here where you know, the, how many corporate decisions, how many products are made that are rushed to market because science wants to cut corners for the money. Uh, because as you know, scientists need Porsches too. And uh, it just bugs me to no end. So if you get a chance to you know, check it out Wednesday, uh, I'll, be, I'll be releasing it called uh, The Code of Credibility. It's Clue 14. And I had fun doing it. It's a little funnier than the ones that I do normally. And I do pick on uh, at least one person who is known for their lab coat. So that's it. Uh, we'll end on that. Thank you, everyone that wrote in. And anyone that's going to write in the future, if you have questions, comments, whatever. You can, you can ask me whatever question you want. Uh, please email me, msergeant23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>